Welcome back to the course on Introduction to Material Science and Engineering offered by Edpedia World. Previous uh, few lectures we have studied about crystal systems, crystallographic directions and crystallographic planes. Today we'll see some definitions and some specific things like single crystal, polycrystal, anisotropy, isotropy and amorphous materials. Let's start with single crystal. Single crystal refers to a material specimen which has periodic arrangement throughout the specimen without any discontinuity. That means that uh, the orientation throughout the material is the same. The unit cells throughout are at the same orientation. Okay. What this also means is that let me just try to draw something if this are the places where atoms are supposed to be right as per the unit cell then throughout the material that specific pattern will be held there will be no discontinuity there cannot be a change in like till here we have this kind of pattern and then over there we have a separate pattern that cannot take place because then we have a change of pattern that is not the case of a single crystal a single crystal is uniform throughout the specimen okay now the idea is that single crystal is available in nature but it can also be artificially manufactured the only catch is that for artificial manufacturing the environment needs to be very very carefully controlled why so because when we are for forming a crystal from let's say liquid then suppose we have a molten liquid and for a single crystal to form there should only be one nucleus right only one nucleus which grows and solidifies if by any chance there is more than one nucleus if one nucleus is say here and another nucleus is say here this nucleus in itself can have different orientation will most likely have different orientation thereby this nucleus growing independent of this nucleus and the orientation mismatch will take place at the intersection similar to this case will happen so we'll get some orientation here a different orientation here and in fact if multiple nucleus are there there will be total randomized orientation so for a single crystal careful environment is required such that only one nucleus is present in fact in artificial manufacturing what is done is that one nucleus is artificially introduced from outside which is itself a single crystal and it is known as the seed the environment is controlled and the liquid kind of grows around that seed and it continues to build on that with the same orientation that is how artificially manufacturing of single crystal is done single crystals are of quite significance why? Because the electronic industry is uh, has an important component in terms of silicon single crystal or other semiconductor silicon uh, single crystal. As we'll see later, that single crystals do not have this ununiformity, which are points or defects. Right? This is a defect from this is a deviation from perfection, and that kind of uh, provides a lot of problem to electronic properties in order to avoid that we require single crystals in many cases therefore single crystals are quite important in electronic industry now that we have an idea about what is single crystal and roughly how it is manufactured we go to polycrystals now the most important uh, elements or metals or materials that we use most of them are in uh, polycrystalline forms so what happens is as I drew over here this and this 
are separated by a discontinuity so this is a particular crystal alternatively known as a grain this is a different grain and these two are separated by this what is known as the grain boundary that's what is written here that individual regions of same orientation are called crystals or grain so we have a grain here we have a different grain here different grain here this might be oriented like this this might be oriented like this this might have a orientation let's say like this okay and these regions of interfaces are known as the grain boundaries. Now, how does this form polycrystals? As I explained in the case of single crystal, for a single crystal to exist, the solidification should be around just a single nucleus. But normally during solidification, under normal circumstances, there are multiple nucleus formation, each of them randomly oriented to begin with, thereby they build on a complete randomness within the specimen the orientation of nucleuses are random they grow simultaneously to consume the liquid state and grains collapse against each other as i have shown here they are kind of eating up the liquid and collapsing against this grain is hitting against this grain thereby occupying the complete region right and two grains are separated by a grain boundary which is a region of orientation mismatch fine so this gives you an idea about the difference between single crystals and polycrystalline material and uh, so with this concept let's see the idea of isotropy and anisotropy so to begin with what is this there are certain properties like electrical conductivity and elastic modulus for certain materials which depends on the crystallographic direction or the crystallographic orientation of the grains okay so a certain plane will have higher electrical conductivity a certain direction will have a higher electrical conductivity compared to other direction or other plane now this behavior is known as an isotropy this behavior to have different properties in different direction is called an isotropy okay single crystals have similar orient orientation throughout therefore what happens is that the properties which depend on direction like electrical conductivity or elastic modulus will depend on the orientation of measurement at which the single crystal is during the measurement right if the single crystal measurement is taken in one 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 plane direction and another for the same material is taken in one one zero direction then the results may be different for such properties which are dependent on crystallographic direction right this is true for single crystal because it has uniform orientation throughout this directional property is known as an isotropy as i explained but there are properties which are independent of direction of measurement or there are specimens which for even for directional properties do not have a particular uh, specific orientation having specific property and different orientation having different properties and such material are known as isotropic what this means is that an isotropic material has same value of a particular property whichever direction we measure it through. Now, how can you think about it? This can be two cases. One is that the property itself is direction, crystallographic direction independent. Second, the material is such that the crystallographic directions are randomly oriented such that uh, they kind of uh, average out in uh, any direction of measurement right that is exactly the case in polycrystalline materials in polycrystalline materials what happens is the grains are randomly oriented in all directions hence the complete polycrystalline material behaves as a isotropic system I hope you get the idea because uh, there will be different grains with different orientation okay different grains at different orientation thereby what will happen is that the average orientation 
will be same in all directions so there is no case of an isotropy to happen because it the directions are averaged out in all the directions fine next uh, let us understand uh, idea about non crystalline or amorphous material as you have already seen as i have already discussed before that amorphous materials do not have a long range periodic arrangement crystalline materials have long range periodic arrangement and why what is the idea that generates crystalline or amorphous material what is it that determines it is the fact of ease of liquid transforming to ordered solid state if it is very easy for the liquid to transform into ordered solid state then we get crystalline material else we get amorphous material so how can amorphous material be formed when is the ease of transforming into ordered state not there there are two cases basically speaking one is that the structure which is formed after solidification is a very complex structure when the structure formed is very complex structure which is the case in most of polymers then what happens is one molecule and the next molecule no longer forms a pattern they are randomly oriented thereby we get a amorphous kind of structure a second case can be when we do rapid cooling when we do rapid cooling what happens we are giving the material insufficient time for diffusion and without diffusion the ordering cannot take place thereby insufficient time to form ordered structure by rapid cooling leads to amorphous material too now broadly speaking metals are mostly crystalline ceramics can be crystalline as well as amorphous depending on different criteria whereas polymers are mainly amorphous why so because polymers are normally long chain materials which are complex structure and thereby during solidification it is easier to form amorphous material than crystalline material so this gives you a idea about non crystalline or amorphous materials so today's lecture was a long theory lecture in which uh, to begin with we saw about single crystals we understood uh, what they are then we saw polycrystals what is the difference between formation of single crystal and polycrystals we understood then we saw isotropy and anisotropy right isotropy is when uh, the property is same throughout there is no directionality of property anisotropy is when there is directionality of property single crystals normally so uh, anisotropy polycrystals so isotropy because uh, they are randomly oriented the grains and the properties average out in all the directions finally we saw non crystalline or amorphous material what are they and uh, what is the favoring condition to form amorphous material complex structure insufficient time and uh, that metals are not normally crystalline ceramics can be crystalline as well as amorphous and polymers are mainly amorphous fine so this chapter has been a long chapter in which we saw the concept of crystal systems and we build on those ideas now we have a backbone on which we can further build and understand the very physics of material science and engineering so i hope you will be here for learning more about this interesting field till the next lecture have a great day goodbye